In his recent presentation at SpaceX, Elon Musk admitted to having two things that keep him up at night, or more precisely, what he said was he spends the most mental cycles on it. One of them is a hardware problem, one is a software problem. One is at SpaceX, one's at Tesla, and so they seem like they should have nothing to do with each other. But I beg to differ. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm gonna actually start with the actual little snippet from Elon Musk's presentation. He's actually answering Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. So I'll include a little bit of that question and then the part of his answer that's relevant to this. Of course, I will put a link to the entire presentation in the description if you wanna check it out and you definitely should. It's definitely worth watching. Also, I did my reactions to this yesterday so you can check that out there if you want to also. So definitely check those out when you have a moment. Uh, okay, so a little bit more Raptor 2 talk again. Um, where are you at as far as production? How many do you have? Uh, you know, you, you know, are they, how are they handling, you know, testing? Uh, are they more cantankerous, less cantankerous? You know, just give us a little more rundown, like, on where you're actually at. Is that a bottleneck for the next booster as well? Like, we assume the next booster is going to require, yeah. you know, Raptor 2. So kind of where are you at with, uh, with the production and the, and the testing so far? Well, uh, I mean, right now, of, of any technical problem, uh, I'm spending the most time personally on, on uh, Raptor 2. Like, really, they're, they're like the two things that occupy the most number of mental cycles are Raptor 2 and Tesla full self driving. Alrighty, so as you can hear, Elon Musk said that the Raptor 2 engine and Tesla's full self-driving are the two things that keep him up at night or that he spends the most mental cycles on. Sorry, I always say keep me up at night because that's the kind of thing I do, right? <laughs> if you're like me, I don't know, the stuff that really bothers you is the stuff that four o'clock in the morning you're like, ah, you know, you wake up and you start thinking about it. So anyway, those are the things that worry him the most. They seem to have nothing to do with each other. Of course, one of them is at SpaceX, one of them is at Tesla. Again, like I said, one is a hardware problem, one is a software software problem. So what do these things have to do with each other? So let's break things down just a little bit. An engine, a rocket engine, is one of the most complex things ever built, right? They're in insanely complicated to build. If you look at them, they look like giant plumbing nightmares. The only thing that I've seen that looks more like a even worse nightmare of plumbing is like a tokamak, which is like a fusion reactor thing where it's like the donut with all the plumbing that comes into it. I, that's like the only thing I can think of that's like substantially worse looking than most rocket engines. So you've got that as number one. They're, they're horrifyingly complex to build. They require all sorts of crazy metals and other different types of compounds and uh, you know, it's just a nutty kind of thing. And in addition, they're attempting to build a full flowed stage combustion engine, which has never been flown to orbit before. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, just that by itself will give you nightmares and keep you up at night. And clearly that's done that for SpaceX so far, because obviously it took them a very long time to get to being able to build this Raptor engine, the Raptor engine one, which is what's currently on the Starship number 20 and the booster number four. So those are the ones that are there currently. They're going to be switching over to Raptor engine number two soon. And if you look at the side-by-side -side picture, you can see what a big deal this is. Raptor engine number one, big plumbing nightmare, looks horrific. It's got lots of stuff sticking out all over the place. Raptor engine number two, much, much more simplified. And Elon said during the presentation that they're going to try to simplify this even further. They're gonna change some of the materials out so that they don't have to have shrouds on top of them, the engines to keep them from combusting with the other engines around them from the heat and all of that kind of stuff. So you can see how drastic simplified this engine is and not only simplified in terms of design but also in terms of building they he said that next week so I guess that's like <laughs> just a few days from now actually by the time this video comes out it will just be a day or two from now but he said next week they should be able to produce about five of these things in one week and then they should he's targeting something like seven plus per week 
over time within the next month or so. If you compare that to uh, like the space shuttle main engine, I think it took multiple years to build those engines. I'm not talking about the research thing. I'm talking about actually building one of those engines, not the research part of it. So we're talking about orders of magnitude faster here. So that is a very, very different kind of beast than most engines that have been built before. I actually tweeted out in a response to Elon Musk today. I said, it's something like along the lines of the original like Benz engines, the internal combustion engines that were built in the 1890s and so forth. Works of art, handcrafted, beautiful things, very expensive, so they made very expensive cars. Then you move on to the Model T Ford that, that Ford was building in the 1930s, and you've got this much simplified engine that you could build on an assembly line. And that's basically what they're going for, right? They're going for the most complicated type of engine ever created, rocket engine ever created, but at the same time, they're trying to create an assembly line type production, something that's super simplified. The parts he was talking about, flanges, which are parts that fit over the top of each other, they're replacing that with welds. They're getting rid of any part they can. They're combining things together. And none of this is simple, right? You know, you think about like the oxygen turbo pump, I think it operates at something like seven or 800 bar. And that's a turbo pump, a spinning fan with seven or 800 bar of pressure of pure oxygen, which loves to eat everything. Oxygen is incredibly corrosive. So that oxygen is trying to eat all of the components in that turbo pump and it's, it has to you know feed the engine and then it has to cycle that stuff back through again and it's just absolutely crazy what's going on. And the fact that they're able to reduce that and make it simple and build these things like multiple times like one a day basically, again orders of magnitude faster than any other rocket engines ever been built. So it's really incredible to think about what they're doing with this. And now let's turn to Tesla and full self-driving. That is a software problem primarily. Yes, they've got sensors and stuff, but you know, and controllers and all of that actuators. So yeah, there is hardware with it, but the hardware problem of full self-driving is not really the big issue, right? Most of that's been solved. The car can steer itself. The car has sensors around it. It has cameras. It doesn't have LiDAR. It doesn't have radar anymore. But anyway, it's got what sensors it needs. So that stuff is a mostly solved problem. What he's talking about here is full self-driving software. And it is a bear. It is so, so difficult to solve real world AI, which is what he talked about. I've done so many episodes on this. So just check out any one of them if you want to. It's a starter list I'll put up there. But anyway, this is the kind of thing that, again, will keep you up at night because it's such a complex problem. And what Andre Carpathy and team have done is create something called the Hydronet, which I actually think is now deprecated. I think they've got something else, but I don't know what it's called now. But anyway, it's got multiple heads. It's got trunks that have, you know, there's just neural networks coming in, neural networks in the middle, neural networks going out. Any neural network is really, really complicated and finicky. It's really difficult to know what's going to break it and make it happy. And all of that stuff is going on at the same time with multiple ones of these neural, net, neural nets that have to operate together to be able to make all of this work. So it's incredibly difficult to make this stuff work. And what they're trying to do is solve a real world problem that's never been solved before. So right, it's one thing to solve a lab problem. And they basically did that. Years ago, they could have said they'd solve full self-driving like we researchers do. We say like, yeah, we proved that it works. The concept works and sure enough that works that's great what they're doing now is trying to make it work in all conditions never fail if it does fail it fails gracefully like pulls off to the side of the road or something like that yeah and if you make a mistake you kill people so this is like you know it's something that you really do have to lose sleep over but what does this monstrous software project have to do with a hardware project. Well, if you haven't thought it through yet, what they are is they're both continuous optimization problems of incredibly complex things with a lot of intersecting parts. A full flow stage combustion engine has to operate all together. You can't even test the parts individually. They all kind of have to operate together or you can't run the whole thing because the turbo pump's driven by the exhaust. Anyway, it's just a crazy kind of thing. And if you're interested, Tim Dodd did an episode on that so you can go check it out. He talks at length about all of this stuff. But anyway, it's very complicated. You kind of have to all up test it. You can't really test components at once. And then to try to strip it down and simplify it and make it something that you can create over and over again very, very rapidly in an assembly line type of thing is again, just a whole order of magnitude hard. Harder. Elon Musk has talked about that a lot. You know, the factory is the machine that builds the machine, and that's actually the really, really hard part. As he says, building a prototype, easy, building something that you can mass produce is really, really difficult. So that's what's happening with this 
with this Raptor engine. And so that's an optimization problem. They're trying to get rid of parts. They're trying to simplify things. They're trying to make something, you know, just really, really complex and nasty to work with function. And when you move over to the software side of things, you're trying to solve a real world, super complex problem. You're trying to deal with multiple different software stacks that are all interacting with each other. You're trying to deal with neural networks that really, really are mysterious and super finicky. And it's really hard to understand what breaks them and what doesn't break them. And when they break, why are they breaking? Things like that. So that's an optimization problem. You're trying to optimize an incredibly complex, difficult thing. So you've got incredibly complex, difficult hardware, trying to optimize it, make it mass producible. You've got incredibly complex, difficult sets of software. You're trying to optimize them and you're trying to solve, you know, two of the hardest real world problems going on right now. And that's what he's doing with both of these things. So it's really interesting, even though the Raptor 2 and full self-driving stack don't seem to have anything to do with each other, they're actually incredibly intimately related when you think about that. They're trying to solve really, really complex problems in a way that will function as robustly as possible and that you can replicate over and over again, whether that's deploying that on millions of Teslas or being able to construct a Raptor engine every single day going into the future. So if you really think about it, these are the things and they should be the things that should take most of Elon Musk's mental cycles during the day. He thinks of himself as a computer quite clearly because he thinks about his mental cycles, but they're, they're kind of like complementary issues. One is definitely more hardware. The other one is definitely more software, but they, they they really overlap in terms of that continuous, relentless optimization that they're trying to make happen. And I think that's super, super cool. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it and consider subscribing for more of this. Also, in honor of the SpaceX presentation, we have a new t-shirt, which I think is the best. It's Elon Musk's quote from the presentation that says, success is one of the possible outcomes. Anyway, great job, Dan, and you should definitely order one of those. I'll be getting one very, very soon myself. And of course, don't forget that we have the new battery t-shirt, the Tesla meme quote, Tesla bot, don't mess with Tesla, and lots of other things on t-shirts, hoodies, tumblers, mugs, etc. Check it out in the merch store, link is in the description. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. You all make this possible and I really wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. And of course, if you wanna join the club, definitely check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.